Fine. It's because Palmer Square pulls up on the dress, so she puts on the invite. Um, with the actual, with where we actually meet at. How are you doing today? Yeah, I know. That's why we're in the shade. Yeah, I got, I got water for the dog. Too. Um, so before we get started, we put on the website, we put on the consultation form, but we started recreating training sessions, Zoom sessions, and consultations. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I read over your, your form. Uh, this is the troublemaker, right? Yeah. And then uh, he doesn't like you very much, it seems. Uh, There's just times where he's just aggressive towards me, I guess. Yeah. Um, we have videos. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me see. Inside and outside, or, or particularly, you know, anywhere in particular? Doesn't seem to matter. Okay. Um, so, hello. Are they dog social? Uh, yeah, he's pretty good with other dogs. There's some dogs he doesn't like. Gotcha. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He's just like, no, not this one. Gotcha. This is so, this is Hi, we're training right now. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. But it doesn't look yeah, like he does anything here. Uh, the, Towards the end. Um, so this is the face he makes, and then this oh, is. Oh okay. I see. And then what 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 happened just prior to him making that face? Like. Uh, well, Harvey, we feed him in a kennel so that their food is separated, so he doesn't steal Har Harvey's food. This is Harvey. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, he, he, he can't really see it. He's wagging his tail the whole time. Yeah, but that's not happy, though. No. Yeah, wagging the tail uh, means something's on the brain. Um, and, we, and then um, if we get too close, he'll lash out and, he'll, he'll, and he'll, break he'll, the he'll skin. He'll like, and like bite, bite. And the same thing whenever you, if you try to take him out of a kennel, which is why we're worried about boarding and stuff. We mm -hmm. don't know if, like... Like he, he did bite somebody at a different boarding facility like because a long they, time ago. yeah it was a long time ago mm -hmm. um, because they tried to take him out of a kennel. Sure. It doesn't happen every time, but like if he feels but if, if he goes to his kennel, yeah, can't, we we just can't don't interact. bother him. Food and no food, like if, even if it's an empty kennel, he's defensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, excuse me. When when they when he bit the person at the kennel, did they say? Anything he else? He didn't break the skin, so they're like, we won't give him a warning. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, he's never done that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, was, this was long before. Was, I don't think it's really related to what's going on with it now. No. Oh, it's the but, same thing. But it's it's uh but, it's technically resource guarding, but yeah. it's over the kennel. But like he resource guards when we're Just playing. No, that's not resource guarding. Though. Yeah, well, okay. depending, I'd have to. I'm gonna get more information and I'll explain because sure. there's different types of aggression. Yeah. You know, there's there's food aggression, kennel aggression, maternal aggression, territorial aggression, touch aggression. Like there's all these. It, it's it's the describer and then the, the then what he does in response, right? Yeah. yeah. Like this morning, we're gonna go we're going for a, our morning walk. And he didn't she feel le like she it. leans down to put his collar on, stamps it. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's just sometimes where he's just like, I don't want to be touched. Yep. Sure. Which is fine. But he could tell us in other ways. He could do it without. But he's a dog. Growling and biting. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's, yeah, that's pretty much what they have, growling and biting or showing teeth, yeah. right? Um, but, um, but sometimes, you know. But he attacks Harvey sometimes. He attacks Harvey sometimes, presumably for the same sort of reason. For like getting too close or like being around food getting or something. Getting too close or being around food. Like, or if he thinks that Harvey has a TREAT that we haven't given him yet, like yeah. he'll just go after him. they'll they'll be fine and playing and then counselor will just decide he's done mm -hmm. yeah. and rather than doing it some sort of like i don't know level way mm -hmm. he will bite harvey and harvey will run off and just be terrified for the next does he take the object afterwards there's, there's yeah. a lot of times there's no object okay yeah there's a lot of times when there's just nothing okay <laughs> and then he doesn't know why he's angry and he just stays angry yeah sure um how old is he he's, he's four. four and how long has he been doing this for the since worst we, of it is since we got Harvey and yeah. since we switched his food to a different food so that we could have similar foods for both. Oh my gosh, Harvey, are you too thirsty? <laughs> and how old is Harvey? Harvey he's is... Nice. Okay, so he's still a pup. He's not going to get much bigger though, huh? No. Um, he 
you rolled around. <laughs> and what about like right here with like sharing water and stuff? They're usually all right with it. Yeah, they're good with water. It's really it's the food because Houseware had to eat prescription food for the longest time. Okay. And we put them back on the prescription food recently to see if that was. It's made no difference. It it, it hasn't really made a difference mm -hmm. um, in his behavior. Um, What about the aggression towards you? What about the aggression really towards you? It started around the same time. Oh, with, with, with changing the food? Uh, since we got... Oh, Harvey. We so got Harvey. we moved to a house, okay. got the puppy, and switched his food all in one week, which was not the best decision. Um, but the aggression stuff's really been the last four or five months. That's been really bad. And it's just like... We thought you know, it was just because of Harvey. Mm -hmm. He and I are playing on the ground and then he just growls at me and bites me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But and we've been playing for like 10 or 15 minutes, no problem. So I just don't. Yeah. Just don't um, okay. So then the first three, so you've had him since he was a puppy, I'm assuming. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. two months. Yeah. Okay. And during that whole time, like completely fine. And then you get Harvey and then change the food and then you move and all of a sudden it's a flip. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then when he bit the employee and stuff, was it the same thing was in that time frame of after getting no, Harvey? No, this, was, that this was, was years two, ago. That was like two years ago. This was like two or three years ago. Okay. Yeah. So that was like an isolated incident at yeah. that time. Yeah. Yeah, and we were we switched dog places because we wanted a place that didn't kennel them, but we know that kenneling is like how they like rest. Sure. In between. And um, he's had some aggression issues before. Usually when he would find a stick and bring it home. Okay. Um, yeah, if he, if he would than, get it all than, the way home, he would just be nasty. If you, if you got it from him before you got in the house, it was fine. But if it came in the house with him, it's his. And this was prior to Harvey? This is his yes. yeah. Okay, so yeah, so, the, so the, there's been an issue, but it was just contextual. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It was okay then because it was, it was very sporadic. Mm -hmm. But now it's like every day he just gets nasty. Yeah, so what's happened, uh, or what I feel like is happening here, is that um, resource guarding is, is a big thing that I'm picking up here, or territorial behavior, and then also he's just turned into a big bully. Yeah. Um, so like when you, you mentioned something like, you know, he'll just like randomly bite Harvey. There, there's more to it, I'm sure, like maybe if he's laying down in his bed and Harvey walks too close, um, is trying to figure out what's what's happening more, what's happening around it, to get a better feel for it. Because dogs don't really do things randomly, sure. okay? The, there's always a reason for something. Uh, it's just whether or not does the owner see the reasoning behind it. Because our reasoning and their reasoning is very different. Sure. So like right now you said, we've been playing for 10 to 15 minutes and all of a sudden he growls and bites me, right? That's actually normal. What he's saying is, I'm done playing with you, he growls and bites, right? And I'm assuming that's what happens. You would stop playing, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I would but also that, put a Band-Aid on sometimes. Yes. So but for you, that's not logical, right? Because you're yeah. saying like, dude, you could say like, I don't want to play just, anymore. Leave. Correct. Yeah. But dogs also use physicality as a means of like stopping things. And that's the bully part of it, right? He could come into it and start to play like, hey, dad, let's play. And you're like, oh, you're in a good mood, bud. Okay. And you play with them. And then he's like, all right, now I'm done playing. And then he growls and bites you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's more of like a bully type approach. Uh, but technically in the dog world, like that's sometimes how they handle things. Uh, dogs are very physical creatures. They nip and bite each other in forms of correction, as forms of affection, um, you know, things like that. Yeah, and they play together like with open mouth and like... Yeah, they do really... They, they, they play do together really all the time. well together sometimes. And other times, Harvey's just terrified and like goes to the bathroom and hides behind the toilet for an hour. Sure. Because so, he gets like bit or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He gets bit or like snarled at and... You know, when Calcifer makes his snarling noise, Harvey is as far away. Harvey oh, yeah, because he's, he's been attacked. So he's like, I know what this is going to happen. I know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. So, but for dogs, that's normal. But when we have dogs within a home, that's where things get complicated. Or like even at the dog park because yeah. that dog belongs to another human. Mm -hmm. And that's where things get complicated. But in their own world, like if there were to be a pack of feral dogs, biting each other and stuff like really no one would care unless you're some kind of rescue organization whose intention is to like help these dogs yeah. right so in your case um i think you have a, a bully 
and you also have a resource garter. Okay? okay. Now, what have you done to correct the problem? Okay. So at first, we would try to um, just do the stern talk. <laughs> I yeah. know that's stupid, but <laughs> we tried to like, like, get like larger than him uh -huh. and tell him like he can't do that. Uh -huh or try to get really close to him to yep. show that we're in charge. But then we tried just ignoring it, mm -hmm. ignoring the behavior and seeing if it would like oh, yeah. stop. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, we, we never like hit them or anything. Sure. Um, but they act like hey, they're no, Let's not eat that. Let's not eat that. You got, you got dirt on your tongue. What happens <laughs> when you lick the dirt? <laughs> now, when you've tried to like bully, like bully him, like tower or intimidate him, has it ever escalated the problem? Yeah. 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 Well, sometimes, he, sometimes he'll be like, all right, fine, and he'll go to his kill. We, we tried barking at him, and he's, like, there was another dog trainer a while back, whenever he had, like, separation anxiety mm -hmm. at our, in our condo, we were trying to get him to stop, and that dog trainer was like, oh, you need to go, like, bah, and, like, make it sound like you're barking at him, so that... And that is effective for minor things, but not for this sort of thing. Yeah, because if he he's in, if, he's, if we're on a walk and he starts getting into something he shouldn't be in, that's a that's a thing he recognizes. It's like, oh, dad says no. Mm -hmm. I need to go do something else. But whenever he's pissed off, it, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, he, he just <laughs> changes, like his personality changes all of a sudden. And it's like he has blinders on and mm -hmm. he sees blood. Sure, yeah, yeah. He's, he's too... You can see that look on his face where he's like, yeah, where got he's the like... crazy eyes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and that's when we know that he's in a bad mood. So that's when we're, we've tried to uh, just those types of behaviors, trying to mitigate that. But it, it, it's gotten to the point where I'm worried about sending him to the groomer by himself because there's other dogs around. We're not there. Like, what if he bites the groomer? What if, uh, if we go on vacation, are we ever going to be able to board him, or do we always have to have him stay with family? Sure. Because we don't have any family in Chicago, mm -hmm. and um, we also like like are worried our about parents kids. are going to drive up when we take vacation. Essentially. Yeah. Because we don't we don't like we seven board. hours because we can't we we don't trust them in a boarding facility. Okay. Um, and. Um, and also, Harvey isn't potty trained. So we want to train them together, hopefully to bond them. Or, because Harvey, like, doesn't, neither of them mind us anyway, just in regular training. Oh, aspect. sure, like listen and stuff. Uh, but Harvey is like a serial pooper. And he'll pee outside most of the time, but like, we let him out multiple times a day, but he just. Let's doesn't. get back. And is there anything else we need to talk about? Yeah. No, um, I mean I already know. Definitely a bully, because when when dog when a dog uses aggression or defensiveness for a number of things, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's usually a bully. I mean, just like a human, right? A bully would use their size or their strength or physicality to bully a weaker child, yeah. right? So it's the same thing here. So for whatever reason. Right, so the problem was always there. Because you said prior, that's why I was asking, well, what about before? Because yeah. it, this, it's rare for something to happen like that. Now, if, you've told, if you told me, you know, six months ago, he was attacked by an off-leash dog. And ever since that day, he flipped and you notice all these behaviors, I go, yeah, because that's a very He's never been traumatic happy. experience, right? Yeah. But changing homes, switching foods, and bringing a puppy home, the, the actual trigger, for, in my opinion, is actually the, the puppy. That's the actual trigger. It's just, it's, it changes the hierarchy. And what happens is he, he was resource guarding prior, so there's already some kind of ego. But now he's got another competitor, in my opinion, even though it's a puppy, right? Because he doesn't really think that way. He thinks like an animal. And then all of a sudden he's like, I'm using this form of, of, of I'm using this behavior as an answer, and it's warranting what I want, right? I want to stop playing. I growl and bite you. You stop playing. I want the puppy to surrender that bone or just get away from me. I act aggressively, the puppy gets away from me, right? Yeah. Like that's how that stuff works. Yeah. He tries something 
he gets what he wants, it's reinforced, he does it again. And the ego keeps growing, and then all of a sudden the dog is using it for everything, yeah. okay? And not that, you're not, not that you've not tried to remedy the situation, which you have. The issue is, let's say he tried to bully my pit, okay? And my pit is a more confident dog. And he tried to growl and snap at her. And she's like, you're not gonna do that. What do you think she would do in response? The same thing? Yeah, she'd nip and bite him right back, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And then they would get into a scuffle, most likely. <laughs> she would win. <laughs> she would probably win, right, due to size. But it actually doesn't come down to size, it comes down to confidence. Yeah. So my chihuahua is eight pounds, my pit is 60 pounds. He bullies her all the time, <laughs> okay? But I allow that to happen because yeah. he's the smaller dog, right? She could obviously kill him. <laughs> uh, so that's why I let, I let that hierarchy side like that because the weaker dog should be the more confident dog to keep the bigger dog in check in that hierarchy. Otherwise, if she one day realized, hey, I'm, you know, five times your size, she could obviously kill him. I think Herbie is just clueless and yeah, he has does. confidence, but... He's not old enough to know what's going on. Yeah, he's yeah and then confidence also, like, because confidence is um, contextual as well. So, like, um, as a dog trainer, I'm very confident. I've been doing this for over 10 years. As a guitar player in front of a crowd of people, I'm not that confident. Sure. Right? Two different scenarios. Yep. So he could be confident, like going outside and roaming and exploring, but not confident in reciprocating confrontation. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, what you're, what, so with that being said, the issue with Calcifer here is that no one has bitten him back, so to speak. Yeah. Right? You've tried to intimidate him, but unless you're willing to talk the talk, I mean, sorry, walk the walk, right? That's why we had the saying, talk to talk, but can you walk the walk? Yeah. You'll say you'll do it, but will you do it, right? Is if you go to tower over him or you say your bow word or whatever it is, and it's just presence, and he's like, I'm willing to bite you for this, and you're not willing to bite him back, that's why he's, that's why you struggle. Yeah. So basically, he's figured out that we're bullshit. Technically <laughs> speaking, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that you want to be, you're just trying to figure out what's the language. answer. So, yeah, yeah. Yes, and that's why we're here, okay? Because people are, are, are taught that correcting their dogs or using physicality with their dogs is abuse or it's inhumane. And that's yeah. why dogs have problems and that's why owners have problems, mm -hmm. okay? Because dogs aren't like humans. Dogs are primal. Uh, their two core instincts are survive and replicate. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't care about your feelings, as some people might think they do. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, the little guy. Um, so here, this is why we use a uh, prong and remote collar. I'm assuming you've done yeah. research on us, right? Yeah. So the e-collar gets a bad rap. People think like we're electrocuting their dogs or something. I felt it before. It, it, it's not electric. It's like a buzz. Yeah, it's a muscle stimulator. So if you ever had a stim or tens therapy, yeah. that's what an e-collar is. It's just a miniaturized tens unit. It's a muscle contraction, okay? Yeah. Now there's a number of pieces here, okay? And I'll try to explain it as simply as I can because uh, it is simple, but it's a little bit complex at the same time. So here, the first thing we want to do with a guy like Calcifer is get some discipline into the brain, okay? Now, when people think about discipline, they're usually thinking, well, we're going to make the dog be a bad dog and then, like, punish them for it, right? Now, that is an approach, but it's not the first approach. Uh, the first thing we do is we teach him using the e-collar how to walk correctly. Now, walking correctly versus bullying you in the house are obviously two very different things, yeah. but it allows you to discipline him with the e-collar in a non-confrontational manner. And I want to see what does that fix, okay? Because he right now, because he's not been bitten in any way, shape, or form, he thinks he rules the house. So once he starts to get physicality in a completely non-confrontational manner, potentially a lot of these things resolve themselves. Because he's like, oh crap, well now I can get spanked, so to speak, okay? And then we see what, is, what lingers. And if you're like, hey, like when he brings in a stick, he still guards it. I go, that makes sense, because that's a completely separate context. It's an object he's trying to protect. Okay, and then if it's like, you know, the other day I sat on the couch next to him, he became defensive. I go, Matt, that makes sense because he's defending his area of the couch, right? So then I, I figure out what's left over and then we start to target those things or because they are non-related, nothing may change, okay? But we have to teach them how, what the e-collar is first before we can apply it to the behavior. Otherwise, you're, exactly. He has to know how it turns on and how it turns off, okay? And because most people, are you guys in the city? Yeah, we, yeah, live, we like live like four or five blocks. From here. Okay, gotcha, cool. So most people in the city have to walk their dogs at least three times a day, right? <laughs> so this allows you to practice the remote collar three times a day every time you take them out for a walk. So it stays in the head, 
okay? And it gives you, uh, it teaches you how to use it on a regular basis. It teaches them what it is on a regular basis. Uh, like for us as humans, we have laws, cops, and judges, and jails and stuff. If one day they just disappeared, like there's no point in going to speed limit, right? Because there's no point in stopping at a red light because there's no laws or there's no consequence for it. That's why we have yeah. those things. <laughs> Death, right? But some people don't care. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the people, there's people that would still obey, and there's the people that wouldn't obey, right? Okay. So basically, the program would start with doing things he may already be somewhat good at, in an, in an effort to get him used to the the collar. The collar. Yeah, and the exercise is always the heel command, always, because okay. it's something you practice three times a day, seven days a week. Okay. By the second class, how are we doing? You know what? We noticed he started he started to bully Harvey less. We started to notice him being calmer in the home. I go, great. That's actually what's supposed to happen. We do the second half of the heel, come back class three. How are we doing? We're doing good, but we're still struggling inside the home with this, okay? Then I go, all right, now we need to start targeting the behaviors in the home, okay? okay. Now the problem you're gonna have is that, think of the e-collar as a cop on a collar, okay? You guys go on the expressway? You drive? Yeah. yeah. You go on the expressway? Uh, do you go to the, spe the speed limit? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> most people don't, right? I go with the speed of traffic. <laughs> exactly. And that's what most people do. Yeah. But when you see a squad car, squad car, what happens? Everybody slows down. Yes. And then we pass the squad car and what happens? Everybody speeds up. That's right. So that's called opportunistic behavior. So think of the e collar as a cop on a collar. So what do you think is going to happen when he's got the collar on? Probably be really good. And when it's off? Probably be like, I can do Exactly. Worse. So then we have to find an alternate means of correction. Okay. Because now he's going to know when that collar's on, I can't bully, but when it's off, I can bully. And I have another case that I just wrapped up. Same thing of the Shiba Inu attacking the yellow lab in the house, bullying the dog and all that stuff. Um, and he's like, when the e-collar's on, my dog is great. When I take the collar off, my dog bullies the other dog still. I go, yes, because we need to apply this approach to correct the dog. And he was trying to do it. He was just doing it incorrectly. So then I showed him how to do it correctly and everything was fine. Um, but there has to be an alternate means of being disciplined. So I was raised old school. I was spanked. So like, I always got spanked with the belt. I was thinking, oh, if you don't got a belt, you can't spank me. Yep. Nope, I got a hanger, I got a sandal, and I got my hand, right? <laughs> so as long as I had any one of those things, I knew I could get disciplined, right? So same thing for the dog, except for the dogs, their form of discipline is built in. It's their teeth. So as long as the dog's got a mouth, the dog's gonna respect the, the, that boundary, mm -hmm. right? Well, you're not gonna bite your dog, right? So I give you other means been, of correct. <laughs> I'll give you other means of correcting that aren't dependent on the collar to bridge that gap okay. okay now the problem with this approach is because it is you correcting your dog is that's where that whole physicality abuse thing gets uncomfortable for people just to be straightforward with you sure. okay yeah. but in my book like this is a dog bite okay mm -hmm. it's a dog bite um this dog did not want to go in a kennel that's why he bit me this is 10 stitches there's a little bit here all that right it's all 10 stitches does that seem logical to you to give me 10 stitches just to not go in a kennel. No. No, right? But that's their line of communication. And this is not an aggressive dog, by the way. Sure. This was a dog that had never been put in a kennel. So he freaked out and he just bit me. And he was like, so I didn't load him in the kennel, obviously, because <laughs> I was injured. <laughs> but he got what he wanted. But that's what he, did, he thought he needed to do. He's like, I'm going to bite you so bad, you're not going to load me in that kennel. That's exactly what happened. So dogs have no problem being physical with you, clearly. Right? So why can't you be physical back in order to stop the problem? Cause that's what consequences for, right? So like being raised old school, like being spanked. If I talk, I talk back to my mom one time, okay? Does that tell you anything? Yeah. <laughs> one time, and I learned that lesson real quick, yep. okay? First time it happened, the last time it happened, okay? Because of the physical consequence. So same thing for these guys, that's why I was like, if no one's biting him back in a point, to a point that he respects, the behavior's gonna stay, okay? Um, and we don't do this for the sake of, I don't want to hurt the dog or anything, but you, your parents have to drive seven hours, right? Uh, you feel uncomfortable around them. You're not quite sure when it's going to happen, right? He's got you kind of living on these kind of eggshells in a way. Like, you know, we're, on a, we, we're literally going to walk here and like, let's go for a walk. And he's just laying on, laying on the chair, like not moving. So I had to like and you know. sit on him <laughs> so that he would get up. Because <laughs> he knew if you went to try to... Because I, I didn't know. Gotcha. Right? I didn't know if he was going to be... 
Sure. I, I didn't know if he was going to be like aggressive and snarl at me or if he'd be like, yeah, sure, whatever. Because sometimes it'll just be like, rub my belly. But there's no way to know until I'm reaching for it. Or you're already there. Yeah. yeah. So, so and, and that's what he has you living in. Yes. Right? So why can't you correct him back? Okay. And that's why a lot of dogs have problems because everything's done either through positive reinforcement or the lack of consequence. But it's a balance of both. Yeah. You know? So, and we only do this when he's acting out. Like, if he's being a great dog, there's no need to do anything. Like, I didn't get spanked for no reason. Every time I was spanked, yeah. it was with reason. It's the same thing for these guys. Okay? So, everybody tells you you can't do it, and I'm the person that tells you you can do it, you just have to do it correctly. Okay? So, is your goal simply, um, uh, and it sounds like you need a place to, to keep them. Uh, we want to teach them that boarding is okay, too. Sure. Because... But that's There's not. There's a lot of things that we want to teach them. For, for now, we want to make it so that his, some of his, his, his aggressive tendencies are quelled. Okay. So think of it this way. I have worse guys than this yeah, at my facility. Oh, I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> so I'm not worried about him. Yeah. So if you need a place for him to stay and you've done the training, because then we have the tools we need. That's the thing, right? If someone's like, here's my dog and they don't like people and we've done no training and we have no training tools, and I go like, well, we're not gonna take care of your dog because we have no means of control over this dog, right? But if I've worked, oh, and we get dogs that aren't trained by us and they come in with their e-collars, I'm like, great. I'm like, cool, we have the tool that we need. I don't care, you know? Yeah. Um, so that I'm not worried about and just as for FYI for you. Um, so then I have six, nine and 12 week programs. The way I do things is I look at the problem, I look at what you need and I go, okay, this is what I think you should go with and you can do more if you'd like and I'll give you at least the bare minimum and then whatever you choose to do from there is up to you okay, okay. I would put you at a six class range okay? okay two classes on the heel by the third class we're already working on behavior in the home all okay. the bully type stuff I'll go over correcting them without the e-collar and everything like that and that's the big definer right that really dictates how we go about the rest of the program okay. uh, because every case is different if you're like, I'm tired of this bullshit and I'm just gonna correct them and you just go with it, you're gonna make quick progress. But if it's like, but I feel bad when I correct them and like, I, you know, if I'm not correcting firm enough and stuff like that, we're now prolonging the process. Because mm -hmm. he's, he, he knows, he knows you're trying to correct them, but he goes like, you're full of shit. Yep. Okay, so it really, that's, that's what people struggle with. It's that component of like, now I'm correcting my dog and it's just that, um, that a psychological hump. You know, as I'm sure like my mom, the first time she spanked me, it wasn't like, you know, your kid, like there was some apprehension because it's like, you don't want to hit your kid. But at the same time, it's like, you need to learn your lesson. So it's the same thing for these guys. So uh, probably class three, potentially four, is all that in-home stuff, okay? Resource guarding, uh, teaching them how to release something. is simple to teach, at least in terms of me teaching you. It takes a bit of time to practice to get it to the point where you don't need to have a collar on and you can just say drop and the dog will relinquish yeah, the object, that's, okay? That's hard. <laughs> yes, now it's easy with the, with, the, with the methodology. It just takes time to build up to be reliable. Okay, so that's typically a class in itself. So that's four classes. Classes five and six are like the variables. So like, uh, it could be if everything's going great and you'd like to have like the ability to let them off leash, you could cover recall. If you need the ability to keep them stationary for a period of time, you can cover that as well. Um, but it, so the six classes, two on heel, two on resource, one on resource guarding, one on just correcting them for his nonsense, which leaves two as a variable. So if we need two for more behavior stuff, we got them. If it's like everything's going great and you wanna teach more obedience type control, recall is always super important, but if he's never gonna be off leash, it doesn't really matter. And so if you want stationary well, control, that'd the be the next thing. The only time we let him off leash is when we're at our parents' house. Yeah, they in the middle, middle, of the middle of nowhere, so. Sure, so like having off leash recall allows you to bring him to a place like this and not worry about is your dog gonna run away, yeah. okay? And again, that's up to you because I'm prioritizing the behavior. Yeah, yeah we would prioritize. Yeah. But if, um, we do want to train Harvey too. Right. So, but, Har but Harvey, how do you want to train him though? I don't. Because no. so he when I to learn not to cramp in the house. Yeah. So that's just potty training. It, it it's really hard. We both work full time. We work from home most of the time. But they're always with me, and I let them out every two hours. Um, Calster only goes on walks, but Harvey just like does whatever he wants he, he doesn't listen to me whenever like he'll go first thing in the morning when we take him out and he'll go poop and pee 
then, but for the rest of the day, he'll poop and pee in the house. He'll, like, okay. go like somewhere. Like, you can let him out. He decides he won't go to the bathroom. You come back inside, it's like, go downstairs and poop. Sure. So, Sounds like a good time. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, We've tried treating. We've tried giving him treats and rewarding him. And it's, it's uh, How many times does he poop a day? Like, eight. <laughs> how much does he eat a day? Like, a, thir a third of a cup twice a day. So he's eating two thirds of a cup. Yeah, two thirds of a cup. And he's pooping eight times. <laughs> Little poops or full poops? Full poops. What's he? Is there anything else he gets on top of that meal? Uh, I get a uh, treat or two throughout the day. Yeah, but not not much. Him pooping eight times a day is this. This is not an exaggeration. This is literal. Yeah. There's something wrong there. Some, are you are you using measuring cups or, or a human cup? Measuring, yeah, measuring cup. Okay. Because my chihuahua, how much does he weigh? He weighs uh, like 11 pounds. Okay. He's just a little bit bigger than my chihuahua. Um, and my chihuahua eats around the same amount of food, except he only poops twice a day. Okay. So usually when a dog poops, because it's usually... the well, it's like s some of the poops are half poops. Are you free feeding? Like where you no. leave the food out no, all day? No, no, it's down in that way. Okay. It's down and he gobbles it up. We feed him again at like six at night or something. Okay. Um, something's off there because him pee him pooping eight times to two feedings is 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 something way off. Okay. because um, it's usually the number a number of feedings plus one is a variable. So if I feed my dog twice a day, I would expect two to potentially three poops. Okay. When we're overfeeding people well, that's how cats <laughs> Yeah, when we when we're overfeeding typically it's more than that. Mm -hmm. Regularly. Then maybe we're overfeeding. Yeah, but two thirds of a cup for an 11 pound dog does not seem out the ordinary. Yeah, because it's a, a two third, uh, it's a third cup measure. It's the same amount we give cows for dog. Yeah, it is the same amount. We give How much does he weigh? 24. 24? But what kind of food do you feed? Uh, the ID. Uh, oh, prescription uh, diet? Prescription. For, for cows, but that was just to see if it was related to his stomach hurting from that, so it was probably on a there, there's also like the light and fit okay. um, Akana food and then Harvey is eating the freshwater fish Akana food because chicken was making him lose hair. <laughs> sure. What I would do is drop them down to half a cup. Okay. So it's just a little bit lower than two thirds and then see what happens with the poops. If you see eight drops down to five, I would drop them up a little bit more. Okay. okay? And then you should start seeing one, he should maintain his weight, but two, uh, he should poop the number of feedings plus one is a variable. Okay. So it should drop down to two to three poops a day. Okay. okay? So his weight, because he looks at a healthy weight here, because puppies burn through stuff. Yeah. Like they, like my pit, when I used to feed her five cups when she was younger, like she would just burn through it and poop it all out. Um, now that she's older, her metabolism is slower, so she eats less. But uh, what, okay, so if you want to train both of them, the reason why I ask how you want to train him is I only have one style of training. I don't do positive reinforcement and then remote collar. Oh, yeah. They would be on the same methodology. So you could do them both to be off leash. Yeah. And we can cover the, the, the potty training. What I would do then is probably like a nine. No. Because if you want to train two dogs, all you do is pay a, 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 an upcharge for an extra half an hour because I'm already here. Yeah. So, it's, so you don't have to pay per program, each program per dog. Would you recommend doing the Borgen train at all? For who? For both. The only drawback to the board and train is, is that we probably won't see some of his behaviors okay. because we know, like, we're, we don't do certain things that the average dog owner does. The owner does. Yeah. Now, the pro would be we can get stuff done faster, but you're still going to struggle some things inside the home. Yeah. Plus, you do a hybrid of both? Well, technically, it is a hybrid. Okay. So the board and train is we do all the, 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 the legwork. Yeah. We, you know, get the foundation down, and then we go, here's your dog. Yeah. And then yeah. you have your follow-up lessons that That's come with the program. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a difference between in-person where I teach you and you just do it yourselves, and then there's the board and train where we do it, and then we turn around and, and teach you, but then there's certain things that we can't do because we may not be able to recreate them. Sure. Like yeah. we've had a number of dogs come because of resource guarding, and we bring the food out, all that stuff, the dog does nothing, yeah. okay? <laughs> and the owner's like, what do you mean? My dog bit me five times. I'm like, here's the video. Your dog did nothing, yeah. right? And they're like, yeah. and they scratch their head because we're disciplined. You know, right off the but bat. even if we could get it, get him in a, not even the aggression motion, but if we send him to board and train, mm -hmm. and like he learned 
to mind. Yeah, all that stuff will happen. Yeah. The obedient then, stuff, not a problem. And then afterwards, we can do the aggression, or before we could we could address the aggression with them. We gotta do the obedient stuff. What? We gotta do the obedient stuff. Yeah, they have to learn how to do remote first. But regardless, you don't, because a guy like this, what we do is we have welding gloves. So if like he did act out, we can still handle the dog, yeah. right? And then we'll work on the aggression because we're seeing it proactively, like he's doing it, right? Um, so yes, in your case, it's an option because it, this is not like a severe case, in my opinion. Yeah. If this was a severe case, I would say, no, you want to do this yourself because everything has, would be best tied to you. Okay. The drawback to a board and train is we do all the work, it's tied to us, yeah. okay? So what we could do with the board and train is that they both, um, uh, they're put on the same structure. We can get, help get a foundation down for Harvey for the, the pooping stuff. Yeah figure out what's going on with that. That'll most likely require us to experiment with his feedings. Uh, put them on a schedule and we give you that information. Obedience wise, they would be taught to the same level. Um, it's just obviously for Har uh, for Calcifer here. You gotta go beyond. Yeah, but that you can cover in the follow-up. Yeah. Okay, and then with, if you did two board and train options, you get a board, you get a follow-up for per dog, right? Yeah, yeah. So you end up getting twice the amount of follow-up, which would almost be like doing a program and then trying to do a board and train, except it would just be overkill, okay? Yeah. What I would just do is if you'd like to do a board and train, do that instead, because you're gonna get plenty of follow-up anyways, and should you need to buy a one-off for whatever reason, then you can just buy a one-off. Yeah, the only, like, we wanna do all this ourselves, mm -hmm. but we do both work full-time, <laughs> and it's, like I, I'm by no means saying that I, I we just need a kickstart. That's why I was interested in the board and train. Yeah, no, that's fine. Like so, because I know that it won't uh, like handle all of our worries, um, but it, it'll give us a kickstart so that they have some sort of foundation. Um, right, and, and then the um, like they do whatever they want. <laughs> The follow-up we can use towards the stuff that we can't cover in the boarding train too. Yeah. If we see it, we work on it, okay? If we don't see it, we'll let you know, or Enrique will let you know, like, hey, by the way, we're not seeing any kind of aggression from Calcifer, right? And, but no worries, when he comes home, we just set it up and we provide you the information still, okay? okay? But there's no need to do a, a, an in-person program and then a boarding train, because okay. it's gonna be overkill. Okay. I would just say, don't worry about the in-person, do the boarding train, because you're gonna get a bunch of follow-up anyways, which is ultimately, the in-person program yeah. as it is, okay? okay? And then after you wrap that up, most of our clients do the follow-ups. They don't even use all the follow-ups because everything is great after the second or third follow-up, um, pending you're doing all the homework and stuff, yeah. okay? So, um, but yeah, for a case like this, boarding train would be an option. Definitely for the little guy, that's not a problem either, okay? okay? Um, other questions? Um, are there package deals for boarding trains like there are for so yeah, so the board of train is obviously going to be more expensive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for a guy like him, I would suggest a two-week minimum. Think of one week of our time as three weeks of your time. Okay. So I suggested a six-week program. So a two-week BNT is like a six-week program equivalent. Uh -huh. Okay. But it's more expensive because not only are you getting follow-up, but we're also putting in a lot of work and time into him. Yeah. Right. Uh, for the second guy, for the potty schedule, two week would be recommended. Uh -huh. Obedience-wise, one week minimum is fine. Um, and then we would just provide you the information for the potty training stuff and you just have to reinforce that, okay? And if we did like three weeks for both of them, would they be in the same channel? Why would they, no, we do separate. Why would, okay. why would we do three weeks? I, I don't know. I, That's I'm, more I'm than just, he's suggesting. <laughs> yeah, well. Maybe, are you adding the two plus one maybe? Or? Yeah, I was okay. doing that. No, 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 yeah, 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 no. So for this guy, two week is what I would recommend at minimum, him two week for the potty stuff, but the potty stuff is gonna take time, any, take time anyways. One week minimum for this guy, okay? okay? Uh, they would be taught the same stuff. That, Whoa, let me see. Go. Make it relax. <laughs> so right there with what we have, I gave them three to four firm corrections there to correct the aggression because that can't go unchecked. That, that's just me. Like I see a bad a dog misbehaving. I'm like, you, no, we can't let that happen. So right there, I just popped him a few times on the, um, on the leash and you can see where he was kind of like this because I want to make sure I, I see concern. 
when we deal with aggression, you have to see some kind of concern or apprehension in response. Otherwise, we make no progress with that That's behavior. That's exactly what's going on. They're fine. Harvey's like, hey, I'm going to come check you out. And he's like, no, sure. So uh, they would be in separate kennels, by the way. Uh, in terms of package deals, we do 10% of the stuff. Uh, because it is a lot of work, yeah. sure. but we do do some. We do do that ten percent off the second dog. I mean, he is kind of ten percent. <laughs> of what's going on? Yeah. And then for the system, for the uh, e-collar system, you can do one remote to two dogs. Oh. Okay. Okay. Now the only drawback to that is if I'm working with a couple, is that one person might have the remote and not have control over the other dog type of deal. So if you go on a walk together and one person walks the dog, the other person walks the dog, you're kind of stuck with whoever has the one remote. You can pair a second remote to the system, okay? okay? So that both people have control. I, I'm not sure if you can do that yourself or if it has to be sent into dog trough. Because there's certain things that the company has to do themselves, okay. okay, that we can't do. So. Do we buy them online or do we uh, buy them through you guys? You can, as long as you buy the correct brand and model, I don't care where you buy them, we do sell them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we could go to your facility. And Correct. And we have the system. I would have to call Doctra and then say, like, hey, I have a client that wants to pair a second remote to this system. Can it be done here or does it have to be done on site at Doctra? Yeah, we can just do one at first. Yeah, it's just see how you feel about it. Yeah. The only, just so you're aware, drawback to that is, let's say you do the one remote to two dogs and you have to send it in, is now you're not going to have anything for two weeks to a month because COVID has delayed everything. because. Yeah. Factories aren't as, uh, yeah. So that's uh, fine. Just know we, that. We would just have to vary up what we're doing to compensate. Yeah. So and then, so if you decide, yeah, we want a second remote, you would call up Dogtra, and then you'd handle it through them. Okay. Because um, I I can only do so much stuff at my facility. There's some stuff that's just Dogtra related. Okay. Um, other questions. In terms of uh, scheduling timeline, uh, you know, um, how far in advance notice do you need to get them scheduled for training? Like if we're like, okay, we want to do it, when would the program start? It So we only take four boarding trains at a time. Okay. Okay, okay so that we don't over overload ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It all depends on the calendar. I think right now we have one boarding train, but we have a lot of daycare and trains. I know coming September, we have a lot of boarding trains coming. Uh, yeah, September was when we were thinking okay. that would work with our schedule. So, and what can we do up until then? Just like prevention, the, and like if you're comfortable with leash popping, like what I did, mm -hmm. you know. In the meantime, should we just leave on, his, on the leash on yeah. him so we, we can? Yeah, you always have something that. to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, whatever works to your benefit, you know. Um, and then Kim, so Maria, since you want to do a boarding train, Maria only handles my schedule. Yeah. My, my in-persons and my consultations. Yeah. Kim is my kennel manager. She handles the boarding trains and daycare and trains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be getting in contact with her mm -hmm. and then she'd have, her, have you register your dogs and then you would give her your prospective dates and she would look at our calendar and see if we can make it work. Yeah. Okay. So like, let's say we're booked at four, but when they're coming in, we got a dog leaving two days later. Like that's not a problem. Okay. But if we're booked with like four boarding trains and we got another two coming in, yeah, now we're overbooked. Good. Yeah. And then it just takes away from the quality of training no, for we, everybody. We completely understand. We're yeah. just, I'm just trying to understand, you know, like, like, oh, we're booked until October or something. You know? Right, 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 right. Just that sort of information. Uh, just I so know. Can, just so we can plan more than anything else. Yeah, so Kim can help you with that. She'll okay. take a look at the calendar and say, like, you know, we got space for two dogs up until this point. Uh, if, it was, if you're doing in-person, I would tell you September, October, because that's where I'm booking at right now. But my facility, um, right now, it's slower with the boarding trains, and we just got done with, like, Jesus, like 16 boarding trains the last few months. It was like crazy busy. And all the day, what we have a lot now is daycare and trains. But those are, they don't come as frequently as, it's, because the boarding train is there for two weeks, right? They're there every day, whereas the daycare and trains pop in here and there, so. But Kim would help you figure that out in terms of timeline. But as far as I know, I know we have uh, a couple booking or booked in September and a couple thinking of booking in September. And then there would be you with your dogs wanting to book in September, okay? okay? Okay. okay, well, this is a lot of information for us to think about. Um, so I think that we've got all our questions answered. I think so, yeah. Um, um, nothing that I had not seen. I'm glad you, you saw him like, <laughs> go after Harvey, because that's yeah, how it Yeah, because Harvey happened. was just going up and sniffing, like, hey, do you want to do something? And sure. 
And he's like, nope. <laughs> yeah. But right away, you see I just stepped in, is I use what I have in the moment. But like these are things that you would get in your follow-up, so you learn how to correct your dog and stuff. Do you, do you all use the, uh, the, the pet corrector? The color thing. It's got. It's got color. The no no not the not the, the prong, prong collar. Thing, not oh. The, prong collar, the one that's like looks like a chain almost. Thing. Oh, the choke chain. Yeah yeah. Oh, I call it a slip chain. No, uh, we just do primarily remote collar. Okay. Uh, or we do corrections with the leash. Um, or ourselves, like if I have to do a correction and I use my hand, um, which I may not. Especially with these, they're so small, but it's not like. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, I mean, uh, the choke chain, yes, you can use it to choke. We call it a slip chain because it slips over the dog's head. Um, but no, it would just be a slack collar and then the e-collar, so, okay. And then, uh, so Maria and or Kim will follow up with all the information. And if you forgot to ask anything, you would just let them know like, hey, what's your availability look like? And they would say like, well, we're booked from this time to this time, but around this time we're open. Okay. 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 That's good to know. But otherwise, I've seen this yeah. all my career. I, I assume, because I saw the YouTube video of you in the- Oh, the bite suit? <laughs> yeah, the bite suit. Yeah, don't need that here. I was like, I don't think that's the case with Calcifer, but- <laughs> Yeah. I know you have that, so. At least you have <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have actually we actually have a little Boston Terrier that we had to wear it for because oh. he's a ninja and he like just jumps up and like will bite you on your shoulder. Oh, shit. Yeah. So like <laughs> even though he's small, we got he's 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 crazy, but he's doing really well already as it is, and he would bite the owners and everything too. So yeah, this I've seen this countless times throughout my career. I'm not worried about it. Okay. 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 Um, that and, makes us feel better. <laughs> mm -hmm. and you can go to my YouTube channel. You can check out our our videos and stuff. Yeah. I saw some of yeah, to get a feel about what we're about. You know, I'm super transparent with people. Um, but yeah, so Kim and or Maria would get in contact with you and help you figure out that other stuff. And then about the e-collar thing, and they just let us know how you want to approach it, and then we'll handle the rest. Okay, sounds good. Okay, guys? Thank you. Um, otherwise, if you have any other questions, you let us know. Um, but we'll be in contact. Okay? Right, awesome. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much.